True Gamer here and I'm back with another episode. As you see guys, I got my Amiga 500 mini controller all packed away. Because we have no need for that whatsoever. But you will have need for this. And this is an 8-bit dough. And it's a, a USB wireless adapter. I first bought this at the time when I got my PS, my PlayStation Classic. Because what it does, it allows me to to use my PS4 DualShock with my um, PlayStation Classic. But the great thing about this is, which I have which I have discovered, it works beautifully with the Amiga 500 Mini. And I'm gonna show you how it works right now. Okay, so this is what it actually looks like when you do take it out of the packaging. Just have to take off the cover plug it into the back of our Amiga 500. Now, this is the PlayStation DualShock, PS4 DualShock controller. To pair it up, just hold the share button and wait for the lights to start doing its thing. Okay, once it starts blinking like that, go over to your wireless device and you want to press a button on the back of it and once that starts flickering there you go the, the controller will vibrate if you've got that enabled to let you know that it is connected now to, to prove that i'm not bullshitting it does work let me just change the camera view a bit now once it's connected, it will start wigging out and start doing some craziness like this for some reason. But my DualShock is connected. So I went and changed my my PS4 DualShock controller because it had a little bit of little bit of um joystick drift. So as you see guys, we have my PS4 DualShock controller hooked up to the Amiga 500 Mini. Let's see how this works. So far, so good. I'm going to use the D-pad to control Zool. As we wait for the loading times, yes, we're ready. So, yeah, look. Perfect. Now you might have a little bit of problems on the home screen, like what I did, because it just starts going, just starts wigging out. But when you're in the games, it runs perfectly. There's nothing wrong with the DualShock. There might be other alternatives in the future, so you won't have to just use the, the 8 bit though. There you go, look. Nothing's wrong. There's no latency lag or nothing. There you go. I'm dead. Let's play for a little bit longer. Just to show you guys. It's all good. Firing now. Jump. Yeah, nothing wrong. When you're in the games, it runs perfectly. There's just a, a little bit of an issue on the home screen. <laughs> Where it just starts going out of control. I changed the controller thinking it was the controller, but it wasn't. It's a bug with the system. It doesn't... It gets confused when it's on the home screen with um, a different controller compared to the one that's compatible with the Amiga 500 Mini. But in the games, it detects it perfectly well. As you can see, play a little bit better. Right. If you 
press the option, you go to the home screen. But like I say, the home screen is a bit suspect because it keeps doing that. That's the only downfall. It wasn't doing it earlier. But yeah. Um, yeah, that's the only downfall. You might get that situation. Like I say, once you're in games, it runs perfectly. Look, you can go up, down. Nothing wrong. Start. There's no pull in there, you know? That's a weird one. screen doesn't like the jewel shop. There you go, look guys, look. Don't get that problem when I'm in the game. I can move normal. This game is a sneaker, I never knew it was this good. I love these kind of games. I didn't know it was something like this. Let me hold the joystick up a little bit more. go proof is in the pudding should I say proof is in the footage the jewel shock the ps4 jewel shock does run kind of good <laughs> on the Amiga 500 just I just love to solve that problem on the home screen have a little bit more time with it. This game, this game is pretty good. It reminds me of Rambo on the C64. Okay, guys, one more thing before I go. I just discovered this. If you are having that problem on the home screen where the cursor just keeps on going crazy and moving without your without you touching the um without you touching your your jewel shop just hook up the original amiga 500 mini controller and you can just use that as i'm doing now to get the game that you want and then when i select the game i'm gonna show you now i use this game i select it you can just swap controllers and just start using the dual shock. What I'm gonna show you now anyway. There you go, look, you can just use the dual shock as normal. And I can use um I can use this whilst the the other controller is connected. So you'd be able to um you'd be able to do co-op and two players with the PS4 DualShock as well. So that's a good thing to know. And there you go, look. Working perfectly. There's none of moving by itself now. It's like I'm, I'm in control of the controller, how it should be, because I'm not very good. But I got further last time. Let me just do this last bit of footage. Do one for the cameras. So yeah, that's a good you can you can do co-op with the original controller. Because it works fine. So just use the original A500 mini controller to do the navigation at the home screen. And then when you're in the game, just switch controllers and start playing with the PS4. Simple. So yeah, I just wanted to add that before I go. As you see, I'm still going to get the same problem with the, the PS4 DualShock. Just got a mind of its own, look. Just keeps on wigging out. As soon as I press the button, it stops. And I try to go sideways. Nothing. It was working okay 
earlier on. But like I say, just hook up the, the original controller. Use that to navigate on the home screen. And once you're in the game, you can use this, guys. Okay. And don't forget, without this, there's no show. So you're going to need 8-bit, though. And you can pretty much pick this up anywhere. Try to get this one that says um, for the PS for the PS Classic Edition. You see that? Okay, guys. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Even better, subscribe. Till next time. See ya.